Hello, y'all. Let's see what I got. We are back with our regularly scheduled programming of my leg talking about whatever the hell he wants to talk about because he has yet to find a niche for the channel. <laughs> thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you guys are well. I wanted to talk about something that really does cross my mind every once in a while. And that is the fact of social media and how people overshare way too much on this sh I ain't gonna lie to you. I don't know if it's because I'm more conservative of what I like to post on my socials or something like that, but I truly feel like a lot of the things that are shared by people through social media are things that kind of make you go like, damn i ain't gonna lie that that, that that seems a little too personal to be saying to the public or damn this n clearly just wants attention or damn i really do not give a fuck or damn is he trying to get himself executed a lot of people take social media too seriously like it's an important beneficial part of their lives that they have to share everything that happens to them or what happens to someone else on their social media when honestly no one asks or gives a leg we do not get people use social media as if they feel they are destined to share everything that's going on to random n in the internet and i just feel like it's pointless cringe idiotic and you know quite frankly dangerous you know what i'm saying you know at times it can be kind of entertaining at least from an outsider's point of view at times but at the end of the day it's not ideal let's take an example that i find cringe for instance this is a variation that i'd like to call trauma dumping look at this video <laughs> why why did you have to go? Why did you have to leave me? <laughs> this is a video of someone crying, right? Blah, blah, blah. She's crying or whatever because she had a breakup. Now, listen. I know breakups are hard, you know, it can take a toll on your mental, especially when you've been done in. You know what I'm saying? It takes time to heal from that sort of thing. I've had my fair share of breakups before. But... Uh, Y'all don't find it a bit strange that the bitch went out of her way to grab her phone, go to the camera app, go on video mode, set up her phone so it doesn't tip or fall over, and press record, and proceed to start crying in front of the camera? Like, like, like what the f***? Come on now, dawg. Like, imagine doing all of that, then posting that sh to social media for random people to see it. You gotta be ashamed of yourself, nigga. Like, the concept of forcing yourself to cry on camera and then posting it seems a bit ridiculous to me, and ironically enough, makes me want to take you less serious than what you were expecting. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. Like, what the f*** do you want me to do, dog? Like, what do you want me as the viewer to do? Cry with you or some shit? Like, she probably wanted me to start sobbing with her. Like, she probably wanted to taste my salty tears through the screen. If I ever see this type of shit on my For You page... start crying all right i'm gonna start crying tears due to how hard i laugh watching this video bro like people who do this are the most cringe corny niggas alive i swear and i feel like this stuff shouldn't be on social media when it comes to griefing grief of people that you know irl grief of your family grief alone even and when you do grief alone do not go ahead and set up a canon xa55 professional camcorder and record yourself and post it online i feel like people that do this are victims of being chronically online I'm not gonna lie like you have internalized the sense of individualism to the point where you isolate yourself and you make social media part of your personality or at least intertwine social media in your personal life so that they go hand in hand in a way where you feel the need to be at such a vulnerable position publicly every single time you are now reliant on random people from venezuela to comfort you rather than gaining that comfort within yourself or at least with people that you know irl such as family you know venting and posting things that are personal to the point where it's like you give me the impression of damn i really don't feel like i was supposed to see or hear this is a result of an addiction to the internet in my opinion like you are getting way too comfortable on this shit dog private things should stay private i don't need to know that your girlfriend cheated on you with dabble 
I didn't need to know that the reason your boyfriend left was because he said that your pussy was drier than beef jerky. And I'll be damned, I'll be disrespected like that. Like, bro, it's like these people don't realize that this sh that you are telling us can not only embarrass your partner or your ex partner, but it's also embarrassing to you. Then you get niggas clowning you in the comment section when you griefing, and it's like, you see why it would have been better to keep it private? Don't assume everyone on the internet is going to take you seriously. Like, that's another thing. Because if you have that high expectation after you know just trauma dumping out of nowhere in an inappropriate setting you you are potentially setting yourself up for a disaster you're going to be disappointed bro i'll be honest all right <laughs> i feel like people would have more respect for you for keeping that sh private than publicizing every single one of your problems that you got going on another variation of oversharing that i find cringe is when it comes to drama, drama especially drama within families we can take for example the whole ksi versus deji beef you know if you all know about that but if you don't know about it then i'll give you a brief overview the ksi and deji beef was an altercation that happened between two brothers that at the time had a really unhealthy relationship. They, they, you know, they had a bunch of family issues and it started to be publicized through YouTube where they made videos on each other. Deji felt that the way he was being treated by KSI throughout his childhood was terrible. And KSI said on a video that he didn't know that Deji felt he got treated like shit from him until Deji said it publicly and accuses Deji of lying. So at this point, you, you, you would think that Deji would just call KSI you know to talk about what and how he felt towards him you know considering that they know each other and you know they have each other's phone numbers and you know they are fucking brothers Damn! but no they were unable to keep things private then ksi starts talking about how deji is always favored by their parents over him and then the parents get involved <laughs> And the result of all this is all parties not knowing that one person felt this way about another person, which you can say is the lack of transparency and communication within the family. You know, family issues, right? You, you, you would think they would not let it get this far and from this point forward, keep things private. But no, they were unable to keep things private. Then KSI and Deji especially deji starts crying like some bitch ass niggas on camera due to how much pain they have endured throughout the whole situation then they eventually meet up at the family house and secretly start recording combos between one another and posting them online to social media and leaving it up to the public to decide who's right and or who's wrong when the public shouldn't even know about it which is something that most people would say at this point there's no way that this shouldn't be resolved privately right but nah these two baboons kept going at it until the end of time until eventually deji admits that he's been having mental health issues as well as ksi admitting it as well so so so, so they pretty much both get therapists and afterwards they take some time off of the internet finally god damn <laughs> and eventually resolve things privately. Like, holy shit. And now they are one big happy family. Woohoo! Yay! Yes! Hip hip! Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! But was all that public shit really necessary? No! 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 Like, what benefit did y'all have letting your fans see this catastrophe? Like, I'm a fan of both of them, and personally, as a fan, and coming from an outsider's perspective, this shit was mad entertaining, I ain't gonna lie. But on top of that, it was kind of retarded, but still something to watch nevertheless. I wasn't really that sad of the whole thing, because at the end of the day, I watch these niggas for entertainment. I don't know these I, I can sympathize for a bit, but at the same time, I don't know these motherfuckers. So, the f I gotta be so serious for, bro? Just because we're all black don't mean that we're related. They made the decision to publicize their issues, and as a viewer, I have the right to feel any way I want to feel. That shit is cringe, but nevertheless, I'm glad that they figured out what they needed to figure out, but all that back and forth online was just a waste of time, a waste of energy. At least that they were doing this for entertainment, but I highly doubt it, because my goodness, the way Deji looked when he was crying... <laughs> 
I highly doubt he was. they were doing this shit for entertainment. Anyways, let's talk about another variation of oversharing on social media that I hate. And that makes me want to break my leg. Another variation of oversharing on social media is posting your fucking location. Whether it be posting where you eat, where you sleep, where you shit at, where you go to school at, where you go to work at. This has to be one of the dumbest things in the world. Like the idea of just posting your location when it comes to anything for the public to see is you having a lack of awareness when it comes to the confidentiality of certain information in your life. Niggas are so comfortable with the internet that they subconsciously neglect their safety like life is a game. People do this then at the same time question why one day you get your shit robbed or killed or sex trafficked. So pretty much people that have their location publicly for everyone to see Stop doing that because it's cringe and quite frankly no one cares for the most part except your ops. Another variation of oversharing that I hate is straight attention seeking notes or stories. You know the people that unironically post things like I'm logging off Instagram, I'm taking a break from social media, goodbye, I'm never coming back to this platform. Motherfucker, who the hell cares? you like i put that on emil heskey that not a single soul gives a f not a single leg why do people unironically do this how much attention do you want from a nigga like are you expecting us to reply to your notes saying shit like why are you leaving what's the matter man no please please don't leave the nigga with 127 followers wants to leave instagram <gasps> Is there even a point in living anymore? The crazy part is the 95% of people that say cringe shit like this, you know, like the 95% of people that announce their departure like they're switching soccer clubs are the same people that hop back on social media the very next day. <laughs> they don't even leave for real. Like niggas stop posting on their gram for 12 hours and call it a break. Like, <laughs> You fools are abominations, and I hope you guys deteriorate into pieces. You guys stop posting, say you're leaving social media, take a nap for 15 minutes, and then come back on some, well, guys, I have decided to return to Instagram. Like, shut the fuck up. Stop indirectly asking for attention, you fucking moron. You guys look like complete degenerates. Like, if people actually wanted to take a break from social media, they would just stop. That's it. No need for a public announcement. I took a break from my Instagram for three months. I haven't posted on that bitch in a minute. But I ain't made no PSA like what? Like people need to stop making social media their livelihood. It's actually the worst thing you could do as a human being. Don't get caught up in this stuff or else you will get sucked in and it will be hard to get out when you're in. The only people that are kind of living off social media that I will, you know, excuse are the ones that are literally making a living off this shit, you know what I'm saying? Like the ones that are making the moolah. You know, the ones that are getting paid $2,000 on Snapchat to show a picture of their turd, right? But even with monetary benefits to posting your livelihood, there are some limitations that you should have within your audience. Private situations, whether you're making money or not, should not be shown to the public eye. You know, like keep that between you, yourself, and y'all. Or else, prepare to get yourself clowned. Anyway, that's all I have to say for this video, man. Uh, like, sub, peace, break a leg. Real trap shit.